down 800 points yesterday. The market getting shellacked, for lack of a better word. It's going to be another wild ride. What's driving this right now? Well, let's go back to December the 4th. It was a Tuesday, and Mm. I... um, I hesitate to bring up, but there was a tweet that went out where somebody said, I am tariff man. The timing, the beginning of everything started Mm. with trade war. And then obviously we have a lot of headwinds around concern about the Fed. For all the talk this week about interest rates, and this is maybe the most important thing I could share today. The biggest issue is their balance sheet yes. um, extraction. Right. They, they have to slow down the extraction of liquidity from this economy. Very that cool. business spending that was so lacking during the Obama years, it was huge in Q1, Q2, collapsed in Q3. If they can't get that back higher, they will not get the GDP number they need. So um, this is not fundamentally driven. It is fear-driven. There's awful sentiment. The, all these stocks, uh, they weathered the recent selling store. So says our next guest. David Barnson, CIO of the Barnson Group. What do they all have in common? If you're, if you're right, if they've all weathered the storm, so to speak, what's the commonality between them? Uh, the commonality between them is dividend growth. It's the fact that they have a non-cyclical flow of earnings that enables them to continue growing their free cash flow and continue a stable and a dependable, something investors can depend on in terms of the consistency of the return. Well, last time, about a month ago, it was around in the 70s, you thought it was going to go higher. What happened? No, 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 no. This is very important. Okay. I love energy infrastructure. Okay. It's commodity agnostic. We, oil at 50, oil at 70, it doesn't have anything to do with what we want to be invested in. Natural gas is up 35% in the last seven weeks. Okay. What we want is to export gas to China and to have the companies that will make money doing that. Oh, that's music to everyone's ears. Amen. Mm-hmm. But I do think that in the U.S., the FANG leadership is done. That's so, not so going to lead. Place? Well, um, I, it really depends a lot on this trade war related issue. I think that the industrials um, have gotten hit in, mm-hmm. as a result of a lot of the, the activity in the last seven weeks, but they should be doing better than they are. Consumer discretionary yeah. is not going to lead. Fang's not going to lead. I mean, energy is deeply undervalued, no question, but it's well, 6% of the S&P, so how much can it really lead the whole index? Record percentage move yesterday. Uh, what does it say to you about this market? Where do you think we go near term and long term? It was a great example as to why people could not be trying to trade in and out of this thing because you miss a day like yesterday, you potentially miss like a third of the recovery, right? I mean, it's just too important that people sit still, not overreact and not try to trade out and come back later. I mean, 1,100 points in a day. Can you imagine someone who decided to go to cash right before that and thinks they're coming back in in a few days? What do you make of the primary drivers of this market right now, this overall market resolve that we're witnessing? The fact of the matter is that they were way oversold. It's allowed buyers to come back in and start the year off right.